たネギ、野菜巻き、ポークベリーラップ、ネギ。<laughs> Perfect with the ponzu. Hey, Yaki Gang, Yaki Guy here. Today I wanted to show you guys another type of kushiyaki which has been gaining popularity in Japan. If you guys recall from our veggie video, kushiyaki means grilled skewers and refers to the category of non chicken skewers. So today I wanted to show you guys yasai maki. So yasai means vegetable and maki means Wrapped or rolled. And as you guys can see, these are a variety of vegetables are here wrapped in pork belly. Yasai maki originates from the Hakata area in Fukuoka, which is in Kyushu, the southern area, the southern tip island of Japan. And Hakata is very famous for that night dining lifestyle, that izakaya lifestyle. Hakata is also very famous for the yatai, which is basically these wooden pop up stands, these mini restaurants that are scattered throughout the city. You can go and get ramen, yakitori, oden, even sushi, and have your beers and sake all in the outside setting. Although it's a Hakata dish, this has spread throughout Japan. You're gonna find these yasai maki restaurants throughout Osaka, Tokyo, and other major cities in Japan. The popularity of yasai maki really grew among the female audiences in Japan, mainly because all the colors, all the vegetables, so it provides this fun and light and healthy experience for those who are eating it. Just wrapped in pork belly becomes very juicy, crispy. It's definitely a dish that I recommend for everyone to try. All right, so right here we have all the ingredients that I want to use for the yasai maki today. In the center, the most important we have here, this is thinly sliced pork belly. This is Berkshire pork, kurobuta pork that I got from the local Japanese grocery store. Most Asian markets generally will have these thinly sliced pork belly, maybe used for yakiniku or shabu shabu, so see if you can find it. If not, you can also use bacon. Just my recommendation for bacon is go for the one that's lightly seasoned, lightly smoked. If you get something that's heavy on, let's say, maple syrup or apple with smoke and it's very heavily seasoned, it's gonna really cover up sort of the flavors of sweet vegetables. So right here we have pork belly, but definitely you can use bacon. Also next we have here all the vegetables. Right here, these are tomatoes. Kumato tomato is what I'm using, but you can definitely use other tomatoes. Definitely recommend going with sort of the rounder ones. It's just nice and it shapes better when you're skewering them versus let's say that they have longer tomatoes. Also the size is important. So this one is slightly smaller than the size of a ping pong ball. Anything bigger than this, it's just gonna be really hard to bite. Got that juice exploding in the mouth, so go for this size. But any smaller though, for example, this is maybe like a marble size, it's gonna be hard to wrap. It's gonna be a lot more meat to the tomato, so try to go for a size like this one. We have here, these are the green onions. Just the green parts from the green onions, just the top. The bottom whites, that's the crunchy part that we wanna use for our negima whatnot. So these are the leftover green parts, but definitely we can use this in the yasai maki right here. Got some mushrooms, shimeji mushrooms. These are one of my favorites, but you can also use enoki mushrooms, shiitake mushrooms, a variety of mushrooms. As long as you can wrap the pork belly around it, you can use that. Right here, we have some mochi. So mochi is pounded rice cake. Now this is a dehydrated style, square, hard, almost like plastic. You can find these in most Japanese pantries. Most Japanese or Asian grocery stores should carry this. It's really nice that it, when it's hard, I can wrap it easier, but if you can get fresh mochi, that's gonna be fine as well. And over on this side, we have right here, got some shiso leaves. So you guys definitely are familiar with shiso leaves. Use them in my videos previously. Got some lettuce right here. Lettuce, you can use romaine, iceberg, butter, red. A variety of lettuce have been used at Yasai Maki shops. I've seen them, so just go for something that's really fresh, really crispy, because that's just gonna be nice and juicy to complement the pork belly, the fattiness of the pork belly. Same thing with the asparagus. Right here, just really fresh, really crisp. So it's just gonna complement with the fattiness, the crispiness of the pork belly. So this is all the items we have here. So let's get to skewering. So for the yasai maki, we're gonna be using the round skewers. Nice and small, it just pierces through the pork belly, pierces through the vegetables. If all you have is the paddle skewer, that's fine. You can use a paddle skewer, but it just may crack some of these vegetables. So just be careful about that. But we're gonna go ahead and use the round skewers today. All right, let's get started. So let's grab a pork belly. So with pork belly or bacon, sometimes it can be very thick. I like to just 
actually push it down and flatten it out, stretch it out, get as much of that pork belly or bacon as possible. Just go in one direction, roll it as you cover, basically as it covers over one end, you can cut that. Grab another tomato as it rolls over. Now, if you come to the end of this, you can either trim this right here or just go one more layer, a little bit left, it's fine. Wrap this over as soon as it hits one side, as soon as it goes over, then you're done. And in terms of skewering, just put it through the middle. You wanna cover, basically, make sure that the wrap is gonna go over this. Go through one side, make sure you got it wrapped over. Same thing on the other side, wrap over. Another thing to be mindful about, if you have sort of loose edges right here, you can sort of tighten it up. You can knead it together. That way, basically the, the fat is just gonna cook over the tomato. So you can do that on both of these. Let's go ahead and do green onions. So one technique for doing some of these yasai maki, especially if you have an ingredient that is a little bit longer, if you lay out your pork belly, then you're gonna be able to roll it all together at once. Grab it, tuck it over, roll it across. You have something like this. Then you just cut right in between. And you have these. On these edges, cut off these edges. Let's go ahead and do it to this side as well. Next, we have these mushrooms. So we, these are large clusters, we wanna break them apart. Smaller clusters, just so they can still be bite-sized. So I like to lay it out this way to make it easier to cut with my knife. This one go all the way through. Another thing that might make it easier is if you cut this right in the center, that way, you already have even amount to work with. So if you have a smaller one and a bigger one, go with the smaller one at the bottom, and you can go with the wider one. Come through, a little bit smaller, through. Just to be neater, and the bottom edges. Mochi, this in half, really hard, then this one already cut in half right here. Just make sure you get the edge over. Same thing on this side. Just wrap it enough that the edge goes over. So this mochi, it is a little bit hard. You have to push down into the cutting board. It might split right here. That's totally fine. The mochi, when it cooks, it's just gonna sort of melt and fuse together. So make sure you got this side in too. Okay. Mochi right here. All right, let's go ahead and do these lettuce. Now with the lettuce, similar to the green onions, lay out two strands right here. I'm gonna lay out basically an alternate here. I'm gonna kind of roll it up. When you crunch it, definitely shrink. So add a little bit more layer, kind of roll it up. And you wanna be very tight with this, very tight. The tighter it is, you got more lettuce in there. It's gonna stay crunchy. Screw this through. This one's pretty big, so keep it one per skewer. Just trim these off. All right, got the lettuce. So for the asparagus, just go ahead and use the top area. Just wrap it over. The bottom, you know, we can use for stir fry or something like that. It's a thin layer is all you really need. Could chop off the top, but we just keep it on there. But with the last two pork belly I have left, I wanted to just show an alternate way of just skewering this. We've been doing laying two out and just wrapping it up. If we take, say in this case, shiso leaves, lay it out like this. And if you were to sandwich this over, That way you have pork belly, you see, as a sandwich in itself. Secure this through, secure this through. So see that the pork belly is inside and definitely you can use that method on the lettuce or the green onions.
Here we go. This is basically just a sampler of the Yes I Am Lucky. If I had more pork belly, if I had more vegetables, I can show more. All right, I got my grill, it's nice and hot. Let's start putting these skewers on the grill. Tomatoes, mochi right here. Items that are a little bit thicker. I wanna get them started early. Mushrooms, chiso, asparagus. Now I'll leave these, these in a second batch. Let's spray some sake, just so the salt will stick on. The reason I'm salting it is these are pork belly, so it's not flavored, unlike bacon. So I wanna make sure we get some salty flavors penetrating inside. So if yakitori, you're gonna see a variety of shops using electric, gas, and sort of the best shops using the bean jotan charcoal. But in the case of yasai maki with these pork belly wrap, most of the shops are using the electric grill, very professional, industrial electric grill. And what it does is it gets temperature really high, but unlike gas, or charcoal doesn't have a flame source, so it's not gonna flare up, especially with pork belly, very greasy. So if you have fire, you can have flare up. So the electric allows it to get really crispy with minimal flare up. Let's flip these over, some salt on the other side. The shiso maki one, this has the pork belly running on the inside too, so we wanna make sure the heat goes right through. A little bit of sake. So today we got the mochi, tomatoes, the shimeji mushroom, the shiso, asparagus, and then the lettuce and negi. But at the yasai maki shops in Japan, there are so many varieties that you can choose from. And oftentimes they're gonna be in the display case or what's become very popular is like a wooden box. And they come out when you're placing your order in the beginning. This wooden box has maybe about 20 or so variety of yasai maki. They all have little placards that say what they are. So in addition to what you see here, you can have everything from let's say yakisoba noodles, different meats, seafood, cheese, a lot of different cheeses, a bunch of different mushrooms, even a whole egg without the shell wrapped in basically pork belly. Even desserts, they have apple pie or fruits wrapped in the pork bellies. It's just a wide variety of choices available at Yasai Maki. Go ahead and just spin these around. Get the tomatoes. Sometimes you might want to put it on the side. Get that side crisping up. Mochi, you gotta be careful. It might stick to other things, so just give it some space. It's really about nicely getting it even, cooking on both sides, all sides back and forth. You wanna get that pork belly really crispy, but you wanna make sure that the veggies are gonna, they're not gonna over dry, so we wanna keep on cooking them evenly. All right, so everything is looking good. It's smelling delicious. Got the, just that pork belly fat just all in the air. So I think a lot of you guys have been to kushiaki or yakitori shops around here in America and probably had some pork belly or bacon wrap dishes. And maybe one of the most popular one is this bacon wrapped asparagus. And my master told me where he trained at this place in Dokbongi where it's called Nambante. And this is where it originated. I wanna say back in like 60s or 70s, something like that, a while back. And that essentially spread out. And that name actually has spread out even in, in shops in America. I believe the Nambante, the people who work there, opened up Nambankan in LA, popular place a lot of my friends like to go to. So definitely a lot of history among sort of these, these skewers. These are looking good. So let's go ahead and get these plated. So definitely this mochi right here. This has pretty much exploded. I put this on the plate. The mochi, I'm gonna brush a little bit tare on here. Mochi in Japan, you can have grilled mochi with soy sauce. So this is sort of similar to that. You got the grilled mochi, the tare. Got some the right here, the tomato wrap. On the tomatoes, I'm gonna go ahead and use kupi mayo. I really like the tomato with the kupi. Helps cool down the tomato when you're eating it. And then I like to top it with some sort of pepper. So shichimi, in this case I'm using ichimi. Here, got the tomato and mochi. The mushrooms, asparagus looking good. Let's get these plated. Asparagus right here too. These are pretty much good on its own, but if you want a little bit more flavor, brush on just a little bit of tare. But you got natural umami coming in from the mushrooms. You also have that sweetness coming from the asparagus. You don't really need to add too much to these. This is that sandwich shiso. I really like the combination of shiso and ume. So you can chop up some ume, or I'm being a little bit lazy and just using some ume paste right here. Right here, got some shiso maki with the ume paste. Get these guys going. Got the lettuce, and then 
the negi same with before i'm just gonna just a little bit of sake just so that salt can stick a little bit better once we got the char go ahead and flip these up the lettuce is pretty big so we're gonna have to get both sides as well as get the front and back as well i'm also gonna move these skewers sort of into the middle more so the heat has a chance to cook underneath as well it's getting nice and crispy on all sides this way we can get the heat to crisp up the size of the vegetables. And because we're using electric and even the shops in Japan it, it, that does use the Asaimaki, they're using electric. You're not gonna get that charcoal, the binchotan smoke, but the pork belly just has so much of that fatty juices that every bite, it's really delicious. And if we wanna get this front side cooked, and definitely in this case, since we have these Basically the mesh top right here, we can anchor it in there so we can get that top heated up as well. There's definitely just pork belly dripping just falling in and I have water in this tray that's catching the grease. If you don't put water in there and the whole thing just fills up with grease, it can get very dangerous. So make sure to just fill it up with water and empty it out every so often too throughout the dinner, especially if you're cooking a lot of these all right, so these are looking good. These are the lettuce and then the negi right here. I want some sort of light, but tangy sauce. So I got here some ponzu. Just gonna pour some ponzu over. This is the lettuce and the negi with ponzu. All right, there you have it guys. These are just some example of yasai maki skewers that I wanted to show you guys today. When it's safe to travel again and we can all go back to Japan, I definitely recommend you guys, in addition to the Kodawari Yakitori shops, to check out these Yasai Maki shops. Just see all the varieties of skewers that can be wrapped in pork belly. Everything from veggies, seafood, cheese, even fruits. It's a very, very fun experience. In the meantime though, if you guys are at home, if you guys can get access to pork belly or bacon, just take veggies or meats or whatever you guys have around, wrap it up, put it in a skewer, put it on your grill, see what you guys can make. Let me know in the comments what you guys make, what turned out good, I would love to know. All right, that's it for today's lesson. See you guys next time. Bye guys.